Hello everyone, welcome to our first day, or our first true day, of learning about space. So our first topic is going to be our solar system. So before we get really into it, it's important to note that we use the um, heliocentric model of the solar system, which basically just means that the sun is the center of our solar system. And Copernicus was the person who um, developed that idea. Now, the heliocentric model is in direct contrast with the geocentric model, where the Earth was actually the center of our solar system. And there was actually a, an idea called geoheliocentrism, which was this weird combination of the two of them, where the sun and moon revolved around the Earth, but the planets simultaneously revolved around the sun. It's a really uh, sort of fun bit of history when it comes to astronomy, so I'll put a link down below. But back to the heliocentric model, which is the one that we follow, that states that all celestial bodies orbit around the sun. So the solar nebula theory is basically how the story of how our solar system came into being. Well, not story, it's a theory. Nebula is the word we use for the birth of a star. So it's the birth of a star, and our sun is actually a star, so it's the birth of our sun, which is sort of how our solar system came into existence. Now, I would encourage you to pause this video and go open the link down below that talks about the solar nebula theory. So hopefully you went and paused the video and went and watched that um, the solar nebula theory video. We're going to move on and talk about celestial bodies. So celestial bodies are basically just the things that exist in our solar system. And so when I say things, I mean stars, planets, moons. Remember, there are more moons than just our moon. There are asteroids or meteorites when they pass through Earth's atmosphere, as well as comets. What's interesting is that only stars are able to produce their own light. All other celestial bodies reflect the light being produced by the sun. The sun is such an integral part of the universe. It's literally the center of the universe. It provides Earth with all of the energy that we need to survive. But anyhow, anything that produces its own light, we say is luminous, whereas anything that does not, that only reflects light, we say is non-luminous. That's actually a bit of grade 10 optics, a tiny, tiny bit. So planets actually orbit the sun in what is nearly a flat plane. What this means is, um, if you look at a dinner plate, the sun is in the middle, and the planets are circling the dinner plate around the sun. So they're all on a flat plane, as if they were on a dinner plate. I'm sure there are better analogies out there, but this is the one that I thought of on the spot. If you're interested in learning more about this flat plane and why it exists, I'm going to post a video below if, if you want to take a look at it. Now, there are inner planets, you know that already, and there are outer planets. And these inner and outer planets are separated by an asteroid belt, which basically just means a cluster of asteroids in orbit around the sun. So as I've mentioned, our eight planets are divided by inner planets. So we have our four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, in order from the sun out. And these are called the inner planets, or the terrestrial planets. They consist mainly of a rocky core. So that's sort of their, their, what they're made up of. They're terrestrial, or they're rocky. This is in contrast to our outer planets, which are in order Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets are located the farthest away from the sun, and they're called the outer planets. Or another name for them is the Jovian planets. 
or another name for them, are gas giants. They're called gas giants because they're mainly consisting of gases, and they're all very big planets. Now if we pop back to the slide where I mentioned that planets orbit the sun, it is worthwhile to note that the inner planets are much closer to the sun than the outer planets. And what this results in is the inner planets can orbit the sun much faster than the outer planets, purely based on the fact that they have a shorter orbit or a smaller orbit. So it takes longer for the outer planets to orbit the sun than it does the inner planets. Now, we've been talking about orbit, or we've been using the word orbit, and what that means is basically just the time it takes to complete a, uh, a rotation around the sun. But when we're talking about Earth, we also have the terms rotation and revolution, and they're two different things. Earth's rotation defines night and day. So it means that it takes 24 hours for Earth to rotate around its axis. Revolution, on the other hand, is the time it takes for the Earth to orbit around the Sun, or revolve around the Sun. It takes 365.25 days to revolve around the Sun. This extra 0.25 days ends up in our leap year every four years. Now, this revolution, tied to the orientation of the Earth, helps to explain the seasons. So, the Earth is not actually oriented completely straight up and down, and so this is what I've poorly drawn over here. Here we have the Sun, and the Earth is the blue circle. And that black line is our theoretical straight up and down. The Earth is actually tilted at a 23.5 um, degree axis. Um, this does wobble a little bit over time. This is actually called Earth's wobble or precession, if you're interested in looking up more about it. But anyhow, so this is really important for how we get our seasons. So, when the Earth is tilted towards the sun, certain areas are going to be getting more direct sunlight, which means it will be hotter. And so that's, um, that would be summer for that part of the Earth. Other times, this will change to, as it, as it rotates, It'll change so that the axis is actually tilted away this time, and so a different part of the Earth will get more direct sunlight than the season flips, where the one that initially had direct sunlight is now experiencing winter because they're no longer getting direct sunlight. And um, this, this new one is now getting direct sunlight, so they're experiencing summer. And if you're along the equator, you are almost always experiencing direct sunlight. I say almost always only because other factors like clouds can stop direct sunlight in certain regions for a short period of time. Anyhow, I will be posting a Gizmos activity that's optional if you want to explore the reasons for seasons. Um, a bit more on your own later. Now, of course, there's Pluto. We've talked about the eight inner planets, and, and then there's Pluto. Everyone knows the sad story of Pluto and how Pluto lost its status as a planet. Basically, I believe it was 2006, where a bunch of astrophysicists redefined what it meant to be a planet. So they changed the definition, or at least the classification. So, in order to be a planet, the planets had to meet certain criteria. The first was that it orbits around the sun. Okay, check. Pluto does that. That it possesses 
sufficient mass to be nearly round. So literally, the shape of the planet is round-ish. Yep, Pluto does that. Finally, it is able to clear its own orbit, or what is called gravitational kick. What this basically means is that the planet, using its gravity, can push other objects out of its way. Now, Pluto is too small to do this. It doesn't have the ability to perform gravitational kick. This is a problem because at some points in Pluto's orbit around the sun, it passes an asteroid belt. And if it can't push objects out of its orbit, then they can run into each other, hypothetically. So because it doesn't fit that criteria, we now call Pluto the dwarf planet. Pluto is also a bit different from our um, other eight planets for a few reasons. One is it's actually a small rocky planet, and yet it sits beyond the gas giants. Remember those gas giants are those four outer planets. It also orbits a little bit differently, and I'll show that on the next slide. In terms of relative size, it is not much bigger than Earth's moon, so it is really, really tiny compared to some of the planets. Now here's a diagram of our solar system. You see Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. You cannot even see the four inner planets. They're so close to the sun, they can't even be shown on this diagram. That should tell you the distance between these um, four outer planets and our sad little dwarf planet, Pluto. Notice that the, Pluto's orbit is drawn in red, and it sort of goes up on one side and down on the other. And so what this is showing is that it's not as... Um, sort of planar in orbit as the other planets. It's, it, it, it does have a bit of a tilt to its orbit. And the other planets do as well, but they're not as exaggerated as Pluto. I believe Mercury has the um, sort of largest tilt in its orbit of about seven degrees. Now, also notice that Pluto runs through Kuiper's belt. So Kuiper's belt is just an asteroid belt, but some of these asteroids are bigger or equal in size to Pluto, which could one day cause a problem for Pluto. I'm going to be posting a video link below that talks a bit more about Pluto, and I want you to t pause the video and go take a look at that now. So, just a few more things to talk about. In our last slide, we talked about how very far everything is away from each other. So all of the planets are very far away from the sun, they're very far from each other, especially when we're talking about those outer planets. Now, we, because of this distance, we use different units when talking about distances in space. Because on Earth, we use kilometers or meters as a unit of distance, but things are so far in space that it is ridiculous to say 500 million kilometers. So we use something called the astronomical unit or the AU. The astronomical unit is basically the distance between the sun and the earth because we're very, you know, historically heliocentric like that. It's a little bit of a astronomy joke for you. This distance, so one astronomical unit, the distance between the sun and the earth is equal to 150 million kilometers. Now we haven't talked about scientific notation, but if we were to write 150 million kilometers in scientific notation, it would look like this. So if you're doing any reading on your own, and you see a number that looks like that, it's still just a normal number, it's just sort of a different way of writing it that we call scientific notation. I think I'm going to put up an optional activity for you to do to learn how to write in scientific notation. So if we take a look at this diagram, we see Earth, Earth's orbit is out here, and between the Sun and Earth's orbit, there is precisely one AU. 
Now, Venus is closer to the Earth, sorry, closer to the Sun than Earth is. So that means it is 0 0.7 AU. So it's smaller than 1 AU, which makes sense because it's actually closer to the Sun. The distance between Venus and Earth is 0 0.3 AU, because if we take 1 minus 0 0.7, we get 0 0.3. As we begin to look at planets farther away from the Sun than Earth is, we're going to be getting into larger numbers of astronomical units. For example, Mars is about 1.5 astronomical units from the Sun. Now, you likely have heard of the unit of measurement, which is light years. Light years is another way that we can talk about distances in space. So one light year is equal to 9.5 trillion kilometers. If we were to write that number in scientific notation, this is what it would look like. If you recall, one astronomical unit is equal to 150 million kilometers. So, which one is bigger? Pause the video. Is it the light year or the astronomical unit? Now, of course, hopefully you pause the video, you would have said that the light year is bigger because trillion is much larger than million. Okay, so here is a summary of our solar system. You will see our sun right here, and on the left, all of our planets. To help you remember, there is a little saying that is my very educated mother, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, just served us nachos, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. And we have all of these in order right here. So separated inner and outer planets, and remember, the inner and outer planets are separated by an asteroid belt. And outside, we have Pluto over here with our other Kuiper's asteroid belt. So these are our terrestrial planets, our inner planets, with a rocky core. And our outer planets, which are gas giants or Jovian planets. Earth, right here, E, is exactly one astronomical unit away from the Sun. Anything closer than Earth is less than one astronomical unit. Anything further away than Earth is greater than one astronomical unit. And that's basically our solar system. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the links below. There are some that are optional and some that I really want you to take a look at. Let me know if you have any questions.